Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we'll be making our Deadpool Funko Pop character. This tutorial will be aimed at beginners slash intermediates. So make sure you've had a go at my beginner tutorial playlists and you'll be ready for this one. And eventually we'll get onto rigging and perhaps even animations, we'll see. So do make sure you've checked out the beginner playlists in the description and on my website. And if you like what I do, I've got a full character course which takes you from completely nothing to a game ready character with animations ready for a game engine. Incidentally, it's worth pointing out that Daniel Craft made a similar tutorial, which I did notice after posting mine. It's very good, it's a lot quicker than I'm going to go through. So if you want a quick overview of how to make one, his channel's a really good place to go to. So the first thing you want to do is find a reference image and put it into the background. We're going to be making Deadpool, so I can click and drag this image into the background like this. Make sure it's a file that Blender can read, so a JPEG or PNG or something like that. Also make sure you're not in edit mode, otherwise you won't be able to drag it in. So it comes in perpendicular to the viewport camera, and I can reset its rotation and scale by pressing Alt-R and Alt-G to remove any grabbing. Now I can press RX90 and press Enter to move it round to the front like this. I'll go to front view with one on my numpad, G to grab, and move it up into position. Let's just go to wireframe mode so I can see it, zoom in a bit, and make sure it's in the middle. So G to grab, and line it up with the middle there. If you want to change any aspects of your background, then you've got this object data properties option down here, and you can change things like the transparency, which could be handy so we can see our cube, and you can make it only visible in certain viewports and so on. So we'll use the default cube, I'll select that, G to grab in the Z axis and start with the head. So it's obviously the wrong shape. If I press Control 3, that will subdivide it three times. It's a quick way of adding the subdivision surface modifier. So if I go to the modifiers now, you can see a subdivision surface modifier has been added with three subdivisions. We need to edit our shape slightly though. I'm still in object mode, and I'll just go to solid mode so you can see a bit more easily what it looks like. It's obviously symmetrical, so I want to do a mirror down the middle. I can, of course, cut it in half, delete half, add the mirror modifier, but it's much easier if we go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and use the Auto Mirror tool. Make sure that's ticked. Then you can come across to your panel over here, press the N key to get to this panel, and go to Edit, Auto Mirror, and tick on Auto Mirror. That will give you a mirror down the middle. If I go to Edit Mode now, you can see that it's cut it in half, and if I come across to my modifiers, I'll minimize the subdivision surface modifier, there's our mirror. It's a nice quick way of mirroring objects. So it's still very circular. I can add some supporting loops with Control R and add a loop cut round here, so double left click now, and you can see how that suddenly makes it a bit more of a cube. And one down the middle here, so Control R and double tap there, and we've got more of a sort of cube shape for the head. Let's go into front view again, and let's go to wireframe this time to move it around. I'm going to box select the vertices. I'm in vertex mode over here. G to grab in the Z axis and just reposition it so it follows the shape of the head. Careful of doing this, where this comes down much lower than this, because when I go into solid mode, you can see it's got this sort of, well, bum-like shape. <laughs> so make sure this one is level with the middle here. So back to wireframe, make sure you grab both of those and move it up manually if you want. Okay, that's sort of working, it's pretty much the same shape. It's slightly out here, so you might want to add another control loop there, but then you'll have to move these in a little bit more. But it depends how accurate you want to be. Okay, I think the head's too wide, so I'll select all and scale in the y-axis to somewhere around there. You can probably get a side view reference image from somewhere if you need it. I'm just gonna do it roughly by eye, and I think that's fine. Okay, I'll go back to solid mode so we can see the head. I think it needs a bit more curvature at the top, so G then Y, and G then Y here. And maybe a bit more curvature coming in through the edges here, so I'll go to edge mode this time with two on my keyboard, and Alt left click to select that edge loop, Shift Alt left click to select that one, and scale in the Y to bring them back like this. I think that's a bit better, a bit more curved. Okay, so that's great, let's think about the eyes. Let's go to front view and wireframe so we can see where the eyes are, so they're positioned around here. There's a couple of ways of doing this. The way I originally did it was to actually cut a section in here and pull it backwards so there's a indentation for the eyes, but it can cause slight distortions across your subdivided mesh. The easiest and quickest way is just to add the eyes on top and not worry too much about it. So I'll show you that. So into object mode, 
shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add mesh UV sphere. Let's now scale that down so it's roughly the right size, somewhere around there. And let's go back to solid mode and see how that's looking. Now it sticks out a lot, so G then Y, but as soon as you start pulling it in, it does make the eye sort of smaller in a sense, and you start losing this section here. So you might think it would be a good idea to maybe scale in the Y, flatten it out, and then G then Y to move it to the front. The problem you're going to get with that is it's really hard to animate an eye when it's not circular. It's so much easier when it's a complete sphere. So I'm going to undo that. So if you're not too worried about blinking eyes in your animations and you want to do it the simple way, then just scale your sphere. If you do want blinking eyes, then it's probably necessary to edit the head shape slightly. So what I'm going to do is minimize my mirror and open up the subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to bring the viewport count down and I'm going to apply this subdivision surface modifier at two iterations like this. Now the reason I'm doing that is so we've got all this mesh that we can play with and it will create a reasonably smooth shape. The reason I'm doing it at two is so it's not too detailed and we can still edit the mesh fairly simply and we can still add another subdivision surface modifier on top of that to make it look nice. So I'll apply that, I'll go into edit mode with tab and I'm going to adjust the shape around here to give it a sort of indentation for the eyeball. So I'll select those Press full stop on my numpad to zoom in on that area. And let's go to front view with one, wireframe, and vertex mode with one. Let's just start moving these and adjusting them. What I am doing that's wrong in this case is I'm box selecting, so I'm selecting the back faces as well. So don't do what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, back to solid mode, and let's see how much that's distorted my shape. So it's not too bad, as you can see there. We're doing okay. Let's now add a subdivision surface modifier and bring down the render to one. So it's the same as we had before. I'll go into object mode and you can see there's a touch of distortion around the head, but it's not too bad. Now what I want to do is select these faces, E to extrude and pull them inwards like this. And now we've got a sort of eye socket. I'm going to press this button on the subdivision surface modifier so I can see it like a cage. It's a little bit easier to see then. And I want to make the eye socket just a touch smaller, so I'll select that edge loop going around there and scale it in slightly and just adapt the shape accordingly. Okay, so having a look around, you can see it has distorted our head a touch. Let's go to Shade Smooth, right click Shade Smooth and see the damage. It's not too bad. We could up this for the render and it will end up looking like this. And I think that's a reasonable compromise. And here's where I notice I messed up the back. So a quick time lapse of me tidying those up. Okay, so we've modified the head so that we can use a sphere. Therefore, we can get the animation working a lot easier for the blinking. We just need to mirror this across the other side. So select our sphere, add modifier, mirror modifier. And of course, that's sitting on top of itself because our center point is in the middle. So I can use the mirror object with the pipette here and choose the face. That now uses the center point of the face, which is here, and therefore mirrors it across the other side. You can see some distortion in our subdivision surface modifier if I go back into edit mode because we've got a big gap down here. So if you're a bit more advanced, you might want to tidy this up a bit. I would suggest coming in here and cutting across here. That will even the vertices out slightly, but it still does create pinching around the poles and you'll need to smooth some of the vertices out. You'll probably want to bring this whole loop cut up. So GG to edge slide create another cut in here. I'll isolate the object quickly with forward slash on my numpad. And then I'll come out of the on cage version and I'll press GG to slide that down. In fact, before I do that, make sure merge vertices is on. GG to slide this down so it merges with the other one. And repeat that for all the other ones. So those are all joined and then we can get rid of the triangles here by pressing Control X. We can then even up our topology by bringing that down. And you can just manually go around smoothing things out a bit and that will help. And we've got a bit more smoothness around there. So that's if you're a bit more advanced, but I don't think you'll really notice the difference too much anyway. Okay, so that's the head. We'll work on the body in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.